Thank you. I'm happy to be here. The costs of adversary activity on networks are growing at an alarming rate and have reached $1 trillion per year. Adversarial internet robots, botnets, are just one of many growing threats to the internet. Botnets can play a role in launching adversarial reconnaissance, scanning and phishing, influence operations, upliking, and financing operations, ransomware, market manipulation, denial of service, spamming, and ad click fraud, while hiding tailored operations. The goal today is not to share another doom and gloom cyber talk, but to instead offer a hopeful and bold path forward. For example, reducing the presence of botnets on the internet with the aspirational target of zero is a powerful vision for galvanizing policy action. Our Belfer Center report shown on the right describes the systems analysis necessary for achieving this vision, which will be highlighted in the rest of this talk. A common starting point for a systems analysis for protecting a domain, whether it be land, sea, air, space, or cyberspace, is defining what the desired end state is. What do we mean by protecting our shared network domain? A few desired end states are shown here and include an international community that observes and enforces norms of responsible state behavior, a public-private partnerships based on shared awareness and combined action, the proactive observing, pursuing, and countering of adversary operations while reinforcing favorable international norms. A common foundation for all of these is community. Clearly, protecting cyberspace is going to require a community-based approach with the strongest possible regard for privacy. Having provided some desired end states, our next systems analysis task is to clarify what we mean by the network operating domain. From a protection perspective, the network domain is often divided, as shown below, into blue, gray, and red cyberspace. However, a more technically accurate picture is required. To start, let us represent all of cyberspace as a traffic matrix where the rows are the sources and the destinations are columns. Any point in this traffic matrix represents a communication between a source and a destination. This view allows us to note blue, gray, and red space as different regions in the traffic matrix representing their respective communications. We can now overlay standard approaches that are used to protect any domain. Deterrence is the existence of a credible threat of unacceptable counteraction. Walls out defense are actions taken to defeat threats that are threatening to breach cyberspace security. Walls in security are actions taken within protected cyberspace to prevent, to prevent unauthorized access, exploitation, or damage. Security is the dominant investment today and involves identifying and countering actions that are well described by the attack framework and take place almost entirely within protected cyberspace. Historically, in other domains, walls out defense has been the most cost effective and de escalatory approach because threats are defeated before they reach protected cyberspace. And this greatly uh, reduces the potential benefit of an attack. How might we as a community mo move towards a more walls out cyber defense approach? To illustrate, let's use our traffic matrix view to walk through a representative adversarial action and how a current walls in security based approach addresses it. The vertical axis now corresponds to time. The spread of adversary action starts with planning in, uh, in red space at time t equals zero, followed by staging in gray space, with infection into blue space can be achieved by a variety of techniques. Once inside blue space, spreading begins and expands the footprint of adversarial capability. If endpoint scanners have been loaded with the appropriate signature, the activity is detected at time t detect, which is often months after initial staging. Upon detection, widespread cleansing can take place. Meanwhile, the process repeats itself in the network. The key parameter for determining the effectiveness of, of most domain protection systems is T-detect. 
The smaller T detect, the more effective the system will be. The standard approach toward lowering detection time is a domain defense system with an observe, pursue, counter architecture. Let's imagine what this might look like. The first step is the implementation of local network standards that will, that will observe all blue space traffic. The next step is to extend these scanners forward into gray space. With these scanners, the adversarial activity can be detected during the staging phase. While such an observe counter, while such an observe pursue counter defense sounds simple, it can only be achieved with strong community support. Because unlike other domains, cyberspace is almost entirely community owned. The analysis and computations acquired to sift through the observations are technically challenging, but we believe that this is now achievable at reasonable cost. Now let's look a little deeper at what is involved. Because this is a community-based observe, pursue, counter cyber defense, our highest concern is upholding the privacy requirements of the community, for example, GDPR. And so our first step is always anonymizing all observations and formalizing do not observe zones, which adds computational complexity, but through a variety of technical innovations is now manageable. The rapid development of Web3 technologies have accelerated both the need and creation of analysis methods that preserve privacy while providing sufficient visibility. The base of our observations, the raw packets flowing around networks. These packets represent enormous volumes of data with very little information per packet. The top of our knowledge pyramid are communities of people. Between the top and bottom are the various layers corresponding to flows, transactions, movements, and social interactions. To achieve sufficient visibility requires novel, hierarchical, anonymized AI methods that rigorously propagate do not observe zones, and perform with lind layer analysis and a cross layer analysis. For those who are interested in the technical details, I encourage you to read our Belfer Center report and the many references therein. Thank you very much.